So we're saying uh, update accounts, set the balance to whatever the balance is, minus a thousand, where, I forgot my where, where the account number is 101 and the account type is savings, and then update the accounts, add a thousand, where the account number is 101 and the account type is checking. So this, uh, in essence, should move money from checking to savings, a thousand dollars to be exact. So let's, um, let's execute this. Okay, two rows affected, then I do this again. And you can see that it moved um, $1,000 from checking to a saving. This was 5000 and that was 500 now it's 4500 So you might say, oh, great, now, um, you know, the, I, obviously this, this screams stored procedure here. You probably wouldn't want to write this um, each time you wanted to do this. It's something that happens so often, you'd probably want to write it as a stored procedure. So let me give you an example of that. There we go, with the magic of screen screencast, I was able to quickly turn that uh, set of updates into a procedure. So I have this create procedure, ptransfer, it takes a from account, a from type, a to account, to type, and an amount, and then it runs our two updates, taking out the amount from the from account and from type, and then putting it in the balance of the to account and to type. And then, let me show you some examples of executing this, we'll open up a new query. So I can say uh, execute P transfer from account 101 uh, savings to account 101 checking and let's move um, $500. So you can see that this stored procedure is much easier to transfer funds around than it is uh, using this um, this wacky sort this um, wacky set of um, updates. Uh, update statements. Okay, so of course we want to see what we're doing here. So let's uh, select from, from accounts. So here's a before, and there's my procedure, and there's an after. And let me execute this. All right. Whoops, something happened wrong. Whoops! Uh, sorry about that. I, lo I lost a connection to the server. I had to um, reset the reset the account here so I can get back in and re-log into the server. Anyway, so I'm back. Um, so uh, here's my select. I'm running my transfer, which is moving $500, and then here's my select. So if you look before, I have $1,500, $4,500. After, I have $2,000, $4,000. So you might say, this is great. Everything's working the way I'd expect. So what does this have to do with transaction safe? Well, here's the need for transactions. What if we made some small mistake like... Um, you know, obviously there's ways to check for this kind of stuff, but this is the advantage of transactions. What if we made some mis minor mistake like... Um, said take it from savings <clears throat> now lowercase there is no lowercase savings it's uppercase savings and then let's make it a big number like um you know cuz i want to take a lot of money $2000 so watch this it's 1500 in checking 4500 in savings 2000 in checking uh 4000 savings so right now it's 2000 in checking 4000 in savings so watch this it's 2,000 check-in, 4,000 savings. Now it's 4,000 check-in, 4,000 savings. So I actually somehow magically created $2,000. You can see why there's a need to run this as a transaction because you want to guarantee that both statements um, succeed or fail as one logical unit of work so that we don't have this situation where um, money comes out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, this is definitely a problem. So let's see how we can make this more transaction safe. Okay, back in my procedure, you might think it's just something as simple as saying begin transaction. Um, I'll give it a name, transfer, and then at the end here, say commit transaction, transfer. You might think it's just something that easy. Um, if things were in life were that easy, I, I'd be in much better shape than I am now. But it, it's not that easy, and I'll tell you why. Because what this is going to do is it's going to start a transaction. It's going to do one update. And if I give it a lowercase um, 
account type, it's going to say, well, there, there's no row affected there, right? And then it's going to do this update, and it's going to add two thousand dollars back and then it's just going to com blindly commit both of these so the, the rule of thumb when creating transaction safe code is as follows it's always um, start your transaction number one number two do your operations number three test for validity of the operations if they're valid commit if they're not roll them back so let's think a little bit about what testing for the validity means. So what I want to do is say uh, if something commit uh, else roll back. All right. So that's that's what I'm shooting for. The question is, and this is the hard part about writing transaction safe code, is what goes in here. So let's see, how can we how can we figure this out? Well the easiest way I can think of is is using um row count. Because row count tells us how many rows are affected by a, a statement. For example, when when we transfer, we should expect um this to manipulate one row and then this to manipulate another row. All right, so one one thing you can say is all right, is uh is, you know, did one row get affected here and did one row get affected here? And if that's the if that's the case, then commit. If if one row did get affected and the other row didn't, then we have a mistake, maybe we should roll back. Um that seems to handle some cases. One case that won't handle is what if someone gives us an amount that is greater than the active balance. So let's try and handle these um, separately. Let me do a little copy and paste magic here. Okay, after a little bit of surgery, I have uh, our solution here. So same procedure at the top. What I need to do is declare two variables. Uh, I I try this update. If if it works, I should get one. I should get uh, a row count. I save that here. I try this update. Uh, that should give me a row count of either zero or two or three or whatever. Um, if both row counts are one, then that means both worked. And this will work in all cases. For example, if you take out more money from here, if you take out more money from here than you have, the row count's going to be zero because that's going to that's going to throw our check constraint. Uh, if you let's see, if you put a lowercase s in here, there isn't. It's not going to match anything, so the row count is going to be uh, zero. So uh, in both of those cases, uh, we will roll back because the row count of the from and the row count of the to both need to be one for it to commit. So now let's see if this is going to work. Now, if you remember where we left, where we left um, left off with this. We had four thousand in the checking and four thousand in the savings because of all of our little magic that we did. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna fix this. So let's first of all let's take all the money from the savings and put it into the checking. Uh, let's make this a little s first, right? All right, this should not work. So um, and it didn't, right? Because before we had four thousand, four thousand. After we had four thousand. 4,000. It didn't move the money because technically it's not a lowercase s. Now let's make it an uppercase s and uh, let's try and move 5,000. So I'm going to try and move 5,000 from the savings into the checking but I only have 4,000 in the savings so let's watch what happens here. Um, you can see we get our check constraint thrown and um, it goes back and it did not did not update the values, but yet it still works. So if I want to move um, 3,500 from savings to checking, and I execute that, you see now it does. I, I move um, the 3,500 out of the savings uh, into the checking. So hopefully this gives you an idea of you know what transaction safe code is and and how you want to write it, and you know also kind of reinforces the need for a stored procedure. You wouldn't want to have to write this script. Uh, every time you want to transfer money from one account to another, you really want to write that as database logic, um, like we did up here, and then nest that in some kind of transaction-safe code so that you can guarantee that it's it's only going to work um, as you would expect it to work. And um, that's really the nature of the beast, the nature of transactions.
Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the next screencast. Bye.